Good morning and welcome here this morning. We're glad that some of you were able to make it here in person, even in the middle of our storm. And to others that are joining on Zoom and Facebook Live, welcome this morning. Just a reminder that our fall business meeting will be next Sunday after church and a lunch will be provided. So please join us in the lower hall to discuss and vote on our 2023 budget. There are materials for uh, the meeting in the back uh, foyer, so please feel free to grab them and look in that so you can have questions ahead of time ready to go. Now, in Romans, Paul writes to rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. So with that in mind, I wanna first offer our condolences to the family of Ralph Bryanton, who passed away on Saturday, October 22nd. Ralph and his wife, Nora, were both members of First Baptist and took part in Achievers for many years. The family will be holding a celebration on Saturday, November 12th. And in the spirit of rejoicing, a very special happy birthday to Eva McMillan, who will be turning 100 this week. She is also one of our veterans. So after today's service, uh, we will have a card, I believe in the lower hall, and we would invite you to come and sign this special big card for Eva. And there will also be a chance to sing happy birthday together so that recording and that card can be delivered for her birthday, which will be on Remembrance Day. So as we enter into a time of remembrance, it is a time for us to remember the horror of the cost of war, a time to remember how our decisions about handling conflict can come with great consequence. It is a time for us to do our part, to pray for peace, and to commit to work for peace. Would you please stand and join me now in singing, God Save the King.
they shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will will remember remember them. them. Today is not only the day that we observe Remembrance Day, it is also the day we observe All Saints Day, a day where we remember how we are connected to our brothers and sisters in Christ through Jesus Christ. As we prepare to worship, let's hear the words of Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. God does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let us pray together. Oh, we bless your holy name, O God for all your servants who have finished their course now rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness to your honor and glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Welcome in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. It is our privilege to now welcome each other in the name of Jesus. At this time, and in gratitude for the faith they have shared with us, we want to pause and have a moment of silence to remember the people of First Baptist who have fallen asleep in Christ over the last year. So first, we mention their names. O oh Lord, we give thanks for Les Warden, Eileen Hutton, Javon Miller, Al Baskey, Christopher Satropa, Carol Oxigren, Lamona Hart, Winnie Kelm, and Ralph Bryanton.
Lord, may we be mindful of the importance and the depth of the faith that has been handed down to us. May we always remember the importance of living lives of deep faith that can then be handed on to the next generation. May we come to you to receive comfort and strength to live out our lives of faith, Lord. And may the words written in the books of Hebrews spur us on. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Let's join with all the saints in singing for all the saints. You may be seated. 
You guys, most of you were here last week, and you remember what we did? What, or we didn't do it. The rest of us just sat around watching. What did you guys do? Um, uh, yes, Lillian? We did a show for the birthday. We did a, yeah, we, we, uh, we told a story, we acted out the story. What, did, what, did, what was in the story? What was the story about, Max? Do you remember to tell me? You built a wall. And a wall. it wasn't a real wall. You're right. It was a, this is called the suspension of disbelief. Okay? As a, we willingly believe that these were stones and that you were masons building a wall. It was pretty impressive. And who got to build it? Was it just one person? Who was it? Was it just about everybody? Yeah, yeah, it was everybody. You guys, God has called each of you to help build up the city where you live. You have a gift. That's what we saw last week. Each one of you has something, some skill, that is God has given you for the building up of the city. What city do you live in? Regina. Regina. God has given you something to contribute for the common good. But not just that city, there's a second city. Can you see this? This is a, an old painting in a church. What do you see? People. Well, you see people? Yeah, maybe it looks like, what does it look like the people are doing? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> does it look kind of like a parade? Are they going somewhere? Does it look like they're, they're, they, they're all walking somewhere? Well, okay. I'm with, I'm with Max. I think there's some movement. You see the robes? See, you see um, Ben, you see the way their robes are kind of dragging behind them? Yeah, I think they're moving. Sorry? Have two big They've got big clothes. They've got robes like me, like a dress. Do you, you don't see, you don't, your dad doesn't wear dresses like this too often? No, no. Never. Well, there we go. Um, these people, this is a picture of the saints in heaven. And they are heading to the new Jerusalem, the city of God. And the city that they are, be the city that is being built, is being built out of everybody who follows Jesus. See how they're moving? They're following Jesus, and God has given each person who follows Jesus a gift, something to use for the building up of the church and the city of God, the New Jerusalem. And one day, this is what we believe. One day Jesus will descend. Heaven and God's home is going to come down to earth. And earth and heaven will be united. It says the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised. And we will live forever with God. God has given you a gift to build up this city. And God has given you a gift to build up the church until the day that you meet Jesus face to face. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each child here. The rest of us, everyone who's watching them, we all have seen the gifts that you have given them. And we are so grateful for the way they share their gifts with us, the way they build us up and serve the church. We pray that they would follow you every day of their life that they would be filled with the Spirit, that they would know Jesus' voice, that they would hear what they're supposed to do day by day, and how they're supposed to use their gifts. We pray that not just for them, but for all of us, that we would remember that to our dying day, you have given us some task, some gift to use for the building up of our city and our church and the church, all for your glory. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. So if you guys want, um, there's God, we play downstairs.
but um, if, you, if you don't feel like going to Godly Play, you can stay up here and there's the activity sheets, okay? Just because there's just a lot of snow up there. So. Okay. So if you want to go to Godly Play, let's go. Today's Old Testament lesson includes a selection of verses from the New Revised Standard Version of Nehemiah, chapters 7, 11, and 12. Now when the wall had been built, and I, Nehemiah, had set up the doors, and the gatekeepers, the singers, and the Levites had been appointed, the city was wide and large, but the people within it were few and no houses had been built. The leaders of the people lived in Jerusalem, and the rest of the people cast lots to bring one out of ten to live in the holy city Jerusalem, while nine-tenths remained in the other towns. And the people blessed all those who willingly offered to live in Jerusalem. Now, at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought out the Levites in all their places to bring them to Jerusalem to celebrate the dedication with rejoicing, with thanksgiving, and with singing, with cymbals, lyres, and harps. The companies of the singers gathered together from the circuit around Jerusalem and from the villages and regions for the singers had built for themselves villages around Jerusalem. And the priests and the Levites purified themselves, and they purified the people and the gates and the wall. Then I, Nehemiah, brought the leaders of Judah up onto the wall and appointed two great companies that gave thanks and went in procession. One went to the right on the wall, there were young priests with trumpets. They brought the musical instruments of David, the man of God. And Ezra, the scribe, went in front of them. The other company of those who gave thanks went to the left, and I followed them with half of the people on the wall. So both companies of those who gave thanks stood in the house of God, and I and half of the officials with me. There were priests with trumpets, and the singers sang. They offered great sacrifices that day and rejoiced, for God had made them rejoice with great joy. The women and children also rejoiced. The joy of Jerusalem was heard far away. Please join me in our responsorial lesson from Psalm 102, found at page 4 of your bulletin. You, O Lord, are enthroned forever. Your name endures to all generations. You will rise up and have compassion on Zion, for he has signed the favorite. He appoints Zion as God. For your servants hold its stones dear and have pity on its dust. The Lord will regard the prayer of the destitute and will not despise their prayer. Let this be regarded for a generation to come, so that we will yet unborn may praise the Lord. From heaven, the Lord looked at the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners, to set free those who were doomed to die.
Today's New Testament lesson is from Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 17, found in your pew Bibles at page 249 of the New Testament in the New Revised Standard Version. The multitude from every nation. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. I'm going to hold this painting. It's a print of a well-known Canadian painting. Maybe the camera can catch it. I thought I'd have it here just in case there were still some younger ones in the sanctuary, but they've decided to spare themselves a sermon and have gone to godly play. Perhaps some of you were thinking about that as well. I wonder if you're familiar with this painting. It's of the Fathers of Confederation. I don't know if you can quite make it out from the pews, of course, or from the choir loft, it might be tricky. But it's a long painting, and it is set in the years 1864 to 1867, the founding of Canada, and the meetings that were held in Charlatan, Charlottetown, Quebec, and London. The men who gathered here in these conferences knew the significance of the moment. They knew the importance of what they were doing and how this would affect all the people and all the relationships going forward in the regions, uh, in, the, in the areas that they, they represented. At each stage of these meetings, the recording of the names of those present was important. Everyone who was taking part and what was happening was noted. Now, chances are, if you look at this picture, I think there's a chance you've actually read the names of each one of the, how many men? Anybody? Any historians? In there? <laughs> I would have no idea other than I just read it. 36. There's 36 men in this picture. Not all of them were at any one of those meetings, but rather this represents all the people who took part over those, those years. Now, how many of those names would come to mind for us? If we read through all those names, would they stay? Well, chances are maybe we'd recognize Johnny MacDonald or uh, Georges Etienne Cartier. Um, some of us would know Charles Tupper <laughs> or Alexander Galt. The historians, though, would be fascinated by this list of names. And they would know each one and maybe be interested to know their story and how they got there. But we know 
the story itself. And we know what it means for us as a people over a hundred years later. We know that this was the moment that we celebrate on July 1st when the Dominion of Canada came into being. We know the story. Chapters 7 to 12 of Nehemiah are painting with words a very similar portrait. The people of this time, Ezra and Nehemiah, and all the leaders of Jerusalem and the area, they are aware of the significance of this moment. They know that this is like a new founding of God's people. It's like the exile happening all over again and Jerusalem being refounded. After years of struggle, after years of exile and slavery, they had arrived at the moment of the refounding of Jerusalem, the reestablishment of Jerusalem as a place of authority. And so we heard today how there was fanfare, a parade with two groups of people, one with Ezra and one with Nehemiah, going around the walls of the city and meeting up at the temple in celebration. And the joy of the people was heard from outside the city. In chapter 7, in chapter 10, in chapter 11, in chapter 12, there is a long, there are long lists in each of those chapters of all the people who were taking part in these moments. Now, we skipped over them. I am sure historians and students of the Bible are fascinated at these names and what they mean and how their connections are found. But for the most, most of us, it's like the Founding Fathers. Those names just pass over us. And it's the story that we remember. I think our scripture reader was also grateful not to have to read four chapters of names. The people had rebuilt Jerusalem. They had returned. The exile was seemingly at an end because the people, in response to God's call, had got together and worked for the common good. In our scripture lessons, we also heard another portrait being presented to us. It was the portrait of innumerable saints living together with the angels in the light and the love of God. This is the reading from Revelation chapter 7. Who are these robed in white? And where have they come from? These are the ones who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, this great ordeal, this is not referring to some time of specific tribulation or trouble. Life is the great ordeal. And I don't need to say that for many of you. Many of you who even right now know that life is an ordeal, whether it's because of illness, or terminal illness, or chronic pain, or being out of work, or that some pressure that's on your faith and your trust in God. This great ordeal that the saints have passed through is nothing more than getting through life, just surviving and hanging on to your faith. And so this picture is not of a select group of people, we believe as evangelicals especially. It is of all of us who remain faithful to Jesus to the end, who reach out to him day by day, to our last breath. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. This portrait then is the, the portrait of the people who have remained faithful through all the difficulties of life, who have managed to persevere in faith through all the pain and fear and trouble, especially the trouble that comes in those stretches of time before our death. We read the names of 11 First Baptist Church members who have died in faith since last All Saints Day. They were baptized. They confessed their faith. They lived as good witnesses among us. And they used their gifts to build us up, to build up the church and to care for their city. When we gather, 
we join them and the angels in worship. All of them have died without faith, the writer of Hebrews. All of them have died in faith without having received the promises. But from a distance they saw and greeted them. They desire a better country, a heavenly one, and therefore God is their God and has prepared a city for them. Can you see both of these paintings then in your mind? On the one hand, we have the earthly parade of people in Jerusalem with Ezra and Nehemiah celebrating the rebuilding of this earthly city. But on this side, we have the heavenly parade of the saints entering God's presence and the city that God has prepared for them. For the time being, these two portraits remain separate, two separate panels that we look at. One visible, the other invisible. One temporal, the other eternal. One conflicted, the other purified. One enslaved, the other free. The other, the one waiting for death and, dis and decay, the other made whole in the presence and the light of God. But the time is coming when God will bring about the union of these two portraits, the union of heaven and earth through Jesus Christ, the new Jerusalem, the city of God that God has prepared with the saints will descend together with heaven and the saints will rise with Jesus and God will live with humanity. Perhaps we lose sight of one of these pictures. Perhaps we lose sight of the picture of the saints on this side, waiting in God's presence, waiting for the day of resurrection. Perhaps especially in our modern West, we lose sight of this expectation, this world that is coming, and we begin to place unrealistic expectations on ourselves, on our city, and our nation. Expectations that are just not attainable until Jesus Christ comes and establishes his reign on earth. What I mean is that in our personal lives and collectively, it seems in the modern West that we create so much pressure to get it right. There is such anxiety in individual lives to be happy, healthy, together, productive, and individual, successful, and to present that outwardly to people. And so we see the pressure that this creates on people, the stress and the anxiety, and how for some it just creates such ups and downs in their life. And one moment they've got it all figured out and they're happy, they've, got the, they've figured out what it is that's been bothering them, but then again, the pressures of life, misfortune happen. Once again, they're down. And then collectively, there's such an intensity at the moment in conviction that if we could just do this one thing, or if we would just stop doing this one thing as a city or as a nation, we would get it right. We are dividing one another into groups. We are no longer just discussing competing priorities, discussing the merits of different ideas in our politics. Now we are evaluating people and dividing them into good and evil. The result of this is self-righteousness, dismissiveness, and even hate. Or on the other hand, it is despair. And people give up on the church or the world. It has failed them. It has failed to live up to what they know it could be. But our hope, our hope remains unfulfilled until the return of Christ. Now nothing can derail that from happening. Nothing can attack that hope. It is sure. It will come. But until that day, we are waiting. And our work is always in part and is always in prayer. But perhaps there is another tendency, and it's to forget about the picture of the labor of Ezra and Nehemiah and all the people whose hearts God stirred. 
and they worked together for the common good and accomplished something. They built up their city, and there was celebration. They restored a way of life in the city, and people were able to move into the neighborhoods once again. People have been tempted, and perhaps especially evangelicals, have been tempted to only look at heaven and the world that is coming and to reject and dismiss and give up on the city. Jerusalem was rebuilt by people responding to God's heavenly call. Zechariah and Habakkuk and Malachi, Zerubbabel, Jeshua, Ezra and Nehemiah, and all the people, thousands of people whose hearts had been stirred by God and responded, came and built up their city. They had a vision of God's purposes for humanity and a vision of heaven that was coming, and they sought an obedience to God to live that out in their city. They sought to live out that faith that they had that God would work all things for good, that they sought to live out that faith in building up their city for the common good. Our confidence is not in our ability to get our lives in order. Nor is our confidence in the possibility of perfecting our city or our country. But we have a vision of a new Jerusalem descending from heaven to earth one day by the gracious will of our loving God. The new Jerusalem is the city of the triune God. It is the city of the angels and all the saints living together in a shared way of life. And therefore, we here waiting for that city to come, we do not lose hope. As Kaylee read, we are surrounded by this cloud of witnesses who've gone ahead of us, and so we persevere ourselves. The saints who've gone before us and now surround us cheer us on as we complete our course. And so like them, we persevere in faith, in service, in love, in generosity, building up the church and building up our city, all for the glory of our God, who has been faithful throughout all generations and will be faithful to the end. Amen. As we come to this table in the presence of the saints and the angels, in the presence of Jesus, let's remember that we are finite and we are waiting to be clothed with an eternal body. Let's sing, Be Unto Your Name. The words are in your service bulletin. Please stand.
Let us join the church around the world on this day and the saints in heaven and confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. This table is not the table of First Baptist Church. It is the table of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus has prepared this meal for everyone who follows him, that you might find in him sustenance to continue on. If you are a follower of Christ, you are welcome to take part in this meal for your strengthening. Again, the words of Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, and with palm branches in their hands, they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. Whenever we gather together in the name of Jesus, we gather together in the presence of the saints, and we join them and the angels in worship. As we prepare, pro approach this table, please join me in a prayer of confession. If we say we are without sin, we are only fooling ourselves, and the truth isn't in us. Let us pray. Almighty and most holy God, loving and merciful Heavenly Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, we are not worthy to have you into our home, but only say the word and we shall be healed. We have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We've followed too much our own plans and our own desires. We have violated your holy laws. We've left things undone that we should have done. And we've done things that we should not have. There is no health in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us, needy offenders. Spare those who confess their faults sincerely. Restore those who humbly repent. Fill us once again with your Holy Spirit, that we might hereafter live a godly, righteous, and disciplined life to the glory of your name. Amen. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Thanks be to God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and good always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Lord, Holy Father, creator of heaven and earth. You made this earth a good place that humanity might live within it and in your presence. And yet we have wandered away from this good path. You have not abandoned us. In your faithfulness and goodness, our cities continue to be built up even as others tear them down. 
but you have prepared an eternal city through Jesus, and we know that city is coming. We have this hope hidden within our hearts. May it purify us. And we praise you, joining the angels of heaven, and all our sisters and brothers around the world, and the faithful departed. Ramona Hart, Bonnie Kelm, Ralph Bryanton. And together with them we say, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is Jesus who came and will come again in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Gathered here as we are before in the presence of God, let us bring all that's on our hearts and minds and present that, them to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have placed us here at this time. We pray that you would grant us insight to see day by day how it is that we might serve you by serving others. We pray that we might see what our role is in the building up of the church. And we pray for all who are weary and are losing hope, that they would be strengthened again and renewed, that you would sustain them to the very end until they are ushered into your presence and see your son face to face. Lord, we pray for the needs of those in our congregation. We pray for Laurel, that you would bring healing to her after her final eye surgery, that you would restore her completely. We pray for Diane as she prepares for knee surgery this week, that you would grant her peace and rest, that the surgery would go well, and that she would be restored to strength. We pray for Martha as she and Len drive to see to be at her brother Ken's funeral. We pray that you would keep them safe on the road. We pray that you would be with them, that you would comfort Martha and all who loved Ken. We pray for Barry, that you would sustain him day by day, that you would strengthen Elaine as she cares for Barry, that they would have a very clear sense of your presence, accompanying them moment by moment. You would grant him rest at night and freedom from pain during the day. We lift up many who are struggling with other illnesses. We think of Ryan and George in hospital. You'd be with them. We think of others who are at home. We pray that you would speed their recovery from, from illness. We lift up our city to you. We pray that you would grant wisdom to Sandra Masters and all the city councillors. We lift up our province and pray for Premier Mo and the legislature. And we pray for our nation, for Parliament and Justin Trudeau, our Prime Minister. We pray at all levels of government that people would listen to one another, that you would grant them wisdom and discernment as they seek the best way forward for the common good of all Canadians. We lift up your church that we would not grow discouraged in the midst of all of our failings, in the midst of the ways that the church has let us down at times, that you would renew our hopes once again and empower us to build up the church for your glory. And we gather up all of these prayers and we pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
on the night that our Lord, the one whom we love, was betrayed. He had gathered together with his friends in the upper room to celebrate the Passover. And taking, when he had given thanks, he took the bread and lifting it up, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took one of the cups and lifting it up, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And he said, I will not drink again of the fruit of the wine until I drink it again with you. Lord Jesus Christ, you came to set us free from sin, death, and the devil. With love, we offer ourselves to you fully and completely as living sacrifices. As we proclaim the good news, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In thanks for all that God has done for us through Jesus Christ, indeed we bring our lives, our tithes and our offerings, and we present them to God in thanks. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us in this moment as we take this bread and this cup as genuine symbols of the body and blood of Jesus. Unite us to Jesus and bring us in the end with all the faithful to resurrection and everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. For those of you who are in the sanctuary, I would encourage you beginning uh, with those seated on this side, closest to the front, uh, to, to line up here and to make your way to one of these two stations. And when you've received the elements, uh, to take part and to leave them uh, in these trays. And if you are waiting, just to wait until the person is moving back into their seat and then come forward um, as well to the station that is open. And just, just to leave some space as we line up as well. And for those of you who are at home, know that we are eating this meal together, apart in body, but united in spirit. Come.
What are we to say to this? If Christ is for us, who can be against us? Who has the right to condemn us? Certainly Jesus could, having lived a holy life and having been given all authority. But Jesus is at the right hand of God, praying for you. Therefore, be confident that nothing can separate you from the love that God has for you and that God is working all things for good in our world. Let us celebrate God's goodness and how it has come to us in particular as we sing together, And Can It Be? Hymn number 203 in your, in your pew hymnals. The words are there. Let's sing together. And now as you go, go with the blessing of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May God the Holy Spirit strengthen you in your inner being. May Jesus 
live in your hearts and may you comprehend the depth of the Father's love for you. And to the one and only God, who is able to accomplish more than we could ever ask and imagine, to God be the glory in the church and in Jesus through all generations and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, before you go, and as Mark begins to play, just a reminder, if you can, since we're not many, if you can make it downstairs, we can re do a recording. Uh, happy birthday for Eva, to present her this week uh, on her 100th birthday. And a morning smile for you. Mark, as he looked around at the numbers at Learning for Life, and as he looked at the snow, he said, uh, maybe we need to be singing instead of for all the saints. He suggested that we would be singing instead for, for all four saints. That was good. That was good. Yeah, Multi-talented man. Yeah. Yeah. Go in peace. <laughs>